Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jamie and welcome to the Tales of Elementia. I am your DM and we'll be playing and today we'll be playing Daya, a water genisi who is a level 7 rogue. I'm going to introduce you to the rest of the group starting with you Marcus. So Hi, uh, I am Marcos. So I'll be playing a uh, Dal Bovin, a Furball Druid, Druid level 7 today. Brilliant. Holly? Uh, hi, I'm Holly. I'm playing a Spire Genasi Sorcerer with a Clockwork Soul. And finally, Katie. Hello, I'm Katie. And I'm playing a Tifa Warlock with Biophilia. Fantastic. So, let us begin. 5,000 years ago, when Faerun was being formed by the gods, there existed the Elements and the Elemental Plane. The Plane was a hotbed of raw, magical, uh, raw and powerful magic, and it was ruled over by the four Jinn. Afriti of Fire, the Jinni of Air, Dao of Earth, and Murid of Water. They lived in a fragile harmony for eons, until a dark lord rose out of the nine hells to claim the power for his own. He fashioned four weapons, each weapon imbued with unimaginable power, one for each element. And when he brought them and when they were brought together, he held that and held by a single user, they would become unstoppable. Becoming a vessel for the secret element dark matter. And this dark matter would lay waste to everything in the plane, and every plane. The conduits must be hidden and protected. The land will be built and populated in case he ever returns. The four waged war against the dark matter for a hundred years, and after endless battle they, flip, they split the four conduits up, spreading them across Elementia, where they became legend in and of themselves. After this was achieved, the harmony was restored, and the jinn retreated to their holy places, never to be seen again. Ooh. So, yeah, we fast forward to present day in Faerun. Now, there is a small tavern in uh, Vandalin, where a certain tiefling... <laughs> Uh, is drowning her sorrows after being abandoned by her previous party. Yep. Right, so do you want another one? Oh, go on then. Right. I've got so much gold to waste now that they've left me. This is the last time, this is the last one though. You're clearly hammered. You know what, Elmo? You can shut your mouth, because I will do what I want, alright? Bio, if you keep doing that, I'll have to throw you out again. Your best customer, and you're also my most annoying. What do you mean? I barely cause any damage. You burnt down half the bar a month ago. That was technically not my fault. That was the dude who annoyed me. I can't remember his fucking name. Did he die? Unfortunately. <laughs> he had it coming. Um. So I would like you to roll me a Constitution check to see if you can stand another stand. drink. Hold your drink. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. oh wait, no. That's an eleven. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh so as you're sort of having this argument with Elmo the barkeep, uh you throw up <laughs> all over oh, the bar. Brilliant. Um oh, Elmo Elmo just sort of looks at you and goes Bio it's time for you to go to bed. I'll, I'll clean it up, I promise. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Go to bed. Uh, can you roll me a dex check to see if you can make it up to your room? Because <laughs> you are hammered. <laughs> That's a flat three. You get off your stool and uh, <laughs> you just dump and you take one <laughs> bludgeoning damage. <laughs> She doesn't. She doesn't get off the stool. She falls off her stool. Mm, just. <laughs> so, she's literally. <laughs> Elmo sighs and goes, "This is the last time I let her drink me out of all of my alcohol." You this happens. Can suck it. I do often. Um, 
I'm gonna sleep, uh, take it out here. I'll take it out. I'll be right as rain in about five hours. Wait, just wake me up when when I don't know people need to sleep. September ends. <laughs> I said it first. I whispered it. As <laughs> as you're lying on the floor. Uh, you feel an unusual sensation as the air gets filled with static. And beneath you, the floor opens and swallows you. What kind of fucking sorcery is this? Well, is this new fucking magic I came up with and didn't realise? What? You are gone. You are no longer in Faerun. Fabulous. Now, we move over to a long ship just leaving the bay where Del Boven is on a ship. Yes. So, you see, it is early morning. A group, a, fa- a family has collected it on the harbour, and at the very back of the ship, waving them away, is Del Bowen, a furbog, seven foot tall, a seven, fo- seven, fo- seven five, in stature, um, rotund, and gentle, and even with the high winds and and the slowly pacing of the drums of the long ship as it about to leave the bay, there is a cluster of butterflies that is somehow perpetually following him. Uh, he is now slowly pulling out a very long pipe and begins to light it in preparation for uh, the long journey on his beginnings of his spiritual path. Um, turns around and starts to walk uh, to find his seat. Can you roll me a perception check, please? A perception check? Yes, please. That is a dirty 20 for my first roll. 16 plus 4. Well done. Uh, So as you turn around, um, you immediately notice the captain lifting his hand to bat the pipe out of your mouth. And you... Devlin is not naturally dexterous, but at the same time, That's... he knows what's going to happen. Hold yeah, on, I'm so he just sort of right back. be right back. Oh, <laughs> so we will move over uh, to Ada, Atta? Ayata, Ayata, in ca- the candle candle keep library. Um, the, the smell of books, old books, uh, permeates the air, and you can hear the light turning of pages. The silence does hang heavy, but instead of feeling oppressive, it feels comforting. And a elven gentleman called Erak comes over and sits down next to you. So what are you reading? Oh, hi. Um, well, this one... <clears throat> sorry. This one is um, something to do with mechanics. Mm. And how clocks work. Okay. Um, I've noticed you like around a while, and I just wanted to come over and say hi. Um, I just very, I like to make friends in uh, interesting places, and in my opinion, there's no place as interesting as a library. Um, he roll me an insight check, please. So perception check was that. Uh, insight, insight, please. So that's seventeen. Seventeen. You notice this man is trying to flirt with you, like. Um, is everything okay? Oh, um, yes, everything's fine. Um, however, I do have to go. No, oh, of course, absolutely. But it was very nice talking to you. Pleasure. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> turn around and start scuffling off as fast as she can, like um, completely thrown. So you, you, you've, you've scuttled off, which I think is the best way to describe any movement, is scuffling. I love it. I know. Uh, excuse me. Clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap is great, but scuffling just... Yeah. So is waddling. So as you uh, scuttle away, scuffle, scuffle, you find yourself, for the first time, lost. Hello? 
you're in a section of the library that uh, you have rarely been to. Um, you've probably been through that hundreds of times, but it is an area um, associated with myths and legends with other, and extra extra plain old travel. And now could you roll me a perception check, please? Uh, that is a 13. As you turn the corner, you do not notice the... Uh, feel of static in the air. And now we're going to go back to Fearball. Uh, to Del Boven. So. Yes. Um, so as I was saying, he's not <clears throat> the most dexterous, mm. but because he, uh, I would say, because he sees um, he sees him coming, the Del Boven shifts a shoulder to protect the pipe because it is his favorite pipe. So he basically hits him in the shoulder instead of yeah. knocking his hand about his hand. Laddie, you you cannot smoke that on here. The ship is made of wood. Are you, Captain? It's fine. It is not made of straw. Literally, the pyres on the front of the boat would make it more likely to catch fire than a pipe. Just... Okay, you you make a good point. Just... Can you put it out? I forgot the voice that I, that I gave for a second. No worries. No worries. Yeah. Uh, you, were, you weren't expecting me to put on a voice. No, I was a little off. bit thrown by that, if I'm being honest. Uh, it's a good voice, though. If if you can keep that up, I'll, I'll, I'll give no, you... No. I will, don't worry. I, I, it is Del Bovin's voice. I have to clench my teeth for it. But so, anyway, continue. so, we have about a four day voyage until we make port. I'm going to go with the pirate e voice instead of the Scottish. Yes, no worries. Typical pirate voice, no um, worries. We've got about four days until we make port. Um, I'm assuming you have brought all your necessary equipment for your. What was it you said? Spiritual journey. Spiritual path. I spiritual path. And you wondered why. <clears throat> and you wondered why. I'm lighting a pipe. We have four days. Just relax. 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 Have you seen the people I have to deal with? I'm really enjoying this. They're all fine crew members and have made me feel at home. Even if it is only been ten minutes. Now, on the topic of you feeling at home. Um, I... How do you expect to be paying us for this voyage? Oh, he pulls it out and ching ching. There, it's plenty here. Uh, as the he... family's well, off, well enough off. As he takes the, the, the bag of, of gold, uh, he sort mm -hmm. of weighs it up in his hand um so you i don't have a load of coins so i'm just using my dice um no worries. i actually have like a ton of, because of my character's back background he is uh, from a wealthy family so not a worry. he can pay for this. and so he's just like hmm ah mr mr boven we'll put you up in the nicest cabin and uh, of course you are more than welcome at the captain's hold table on. Oh, hold on it's Boven with an M. Boven. Oh, Boven with an M. That is M not what I have written in front of me. <laughs> yeah, I misspelled it. So, uh, so uh, to not give it all completely away, <laughs> away Del Boven, Boven with an M is Latin for bull. Got you. Del is Spanish for the. So it's the bull. He's quite literally called the not, bull. <laughs> not to worry, Mr. Boven. My apologies for my... Now, uh, and he sort of turns his head and shouts down the ship, Boy! And you see this uh, small human boy. Ship hand. Yeah. Uh, ship hand. He, he runs up and he's like, Yes, sir! Uh, show me the... He up to my fucking waist. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's tiny. He's probably six or seven. Uh... And he's just like, show Mr. Boven to the finest room. But sir, all of our all of our rooms are the same. We're on a ship. And he's sort of like, less of your sass, boy. While the captain's talking to, to him, Boven will give a soft smile and, and just raise one finger as a shushing mo motion. It's Roll fine. perception, please. Me? Okay, of course. Um, 
eight plus four. That's a 12. twelve. Okay. Um, you don't notice the static in the air. Um, no, absolutely as, not. <laughs> apparently, all of you are absolutely useless at knowing what's going on. I have an excuse. I'm drunk. And then. Uh, the the ship hand shows you to your room. The room is <clears throat> quite a modest size. Quite. <laughs> um, it's a modest size. It's got uh, a bed, a, like a dresser, you know, usual room mm-hmm. things. Um, right, right. And uh, he's just like, uh, Mr. Boven, uh, breakfast will be at uh, 7 a.m. If you aren't there, oh, uh, of you, course. you won't get fed. Are there any dietary it's... requirements? No, absolutely not. It's fine. But that, unlike most tribes of, uh, of Druidic, uh, we understand the cycle of life. So I um, am fully okay with eating meat. All of a sudden, he looks uh, kind of a bit worried. And he's just like, um, Mr. Bovum, your feet are yeah. glowing. Well, that's not happened before. And then you fall. <laughs> so, you all land. I would like you all to make me a dexterity check, please. Oh, boy. Save or check? That's an 18. Uh, check. 18 for me. That's an 18, okay. Dex. Oh, actually, you need to roll me at disadvantage because you're drunk. Acrobatics. Uh, yes, it'd be an acrobatics check. Uh, that is a. Uh, that is. <laughs> Sorry, go that for is me. really bad, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you rolled a, a one. two. It's a natural one. Oh, you rolled a nat <laughs> one. Oh, okay. I'm gonna save you. I'm gonna save you for last. And you rolled a seven. Okay. I got a dirty twenty. So you've all fallen through the portal and have and you're in a place that is unknown to you. Ieta you land with such grace that you're even a little startled. You're like Huh. Did I do that? Yeah, but what 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 is happening? Biophilia, uh, you land sort of on your ass, like as if you had fallen and you've just like legs out. Legs akimbo. Legs akimbo, and you just boom, and you're like, ah. Uh, why have I? F- I was on. Was I not on the floor? Oh, are you? Are you okay? Uh, and finally, as you are asking if biophilia is okay, Dell. Lan lands um on his head, <laughs> and he takes six bludgeoning damage. Ow! Oh, oh are you okay? Um, uh, <laughs> it's even worse than me. Well, that was a pretty nasty fall. Oh. Time to get up. Oh, yeah. uh, what, what, that was funny. What's happening? Is that uh, what's happening? Who, who, who are you? Um, you. Don't ask you that. As you are looking at each other, you notice that you, that you are in what appears to be a coliseum. Uh, shit. The ground <laughs> is covered in sand and blood. Oh, I hate sand. It's coarse and rough and it gets everywhere. <laughs> Shut up. Fuck you. <laughs> um, you also see <coughs> six other people. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh, maybe five. Oh, no. It is six. Everybody roll initiative. Thank you for watching Tales of Elementia. Written, directed, and edited by Jamie Langdon. Starring Marcos as Del Bovum, Katie as Biophilia, Holly as Ieta Cog, 
and Jamie as your DM and Daria. Tune in next week for the exciting combat.